G'day renovators. Uh, we are doing an ensuite at the moment, as you can sort of see. Basically, we've done, uh, we've gutted the whole thing um, as much as we can, um, or anything, everything that needs it. So this wall um, is existing still, as you can see, nothing's changing there. Um, there's going to be a vanity over here. So what we've had to do is cut the slab out there because um, we had the pipe coming straight up through the slab and we wanted a um, wall mounted vanity. So we've had to cut the concrete slab, divert the plumbing up into the um, framework and it's roughed into here. Um, we've also had some uh, the water redirected because it was in the way of that pipe. Put in some extra framing. Um, so we put in an extra bit of framing here and a little bit of um a little bit of extra stub work there so when we go to bolt the vanity or we'll, we'll screw the vanity to it, um, the framing there's going to be plenty there um, quick tip is to put your tape measure against the wall measure uh, and then like hold it there and take a photo um, both horizontally and vertically so you know where you can put a screw to hit framing and obviously avoid all your new pipes you just put in um, we framed out the niche, so this is going to be our um, shower niche. Um, the floor, it's one of those mid-90s houses where there was a step up, a screed into here. Um, we've removed the whole screed, so it was like, I don't know, 35 mil of screed, so that's all gone. So this should be pretty much um, seamless from the carpet onto the tile. Uh, and then because of that, we need to create a fall in the shower. So what we've done is we have cut out about a square meter of slab. Um, we did that with a grinder um, and cutting wheel. And as you can see, every one and a half, two inches, we've cut a line all the way in both directions and then just chipped it out with a, like a hammer drill. It came out pretty nice. Um, the tighter you make those lines, so if you made them one inch, um, that's obviously more cutting. I'll uh, probably get a few wheels for that. Um, that's obviously more work, but when it chips out, it's gonna chip out flatter and easier, and you're gonna have less issues with getting this uh, as flat as you can. Um, so uh, we've made a bit of a recess for our puddle flanges. Um, we need to make a little bit more of a, of a recess because you've got this little bit here for our um, puddle flanges. So we will be chipping a little bit more around the center here. Um, these uh, may not fit when you go to put them in. Even though you get the correct one, they may not slide in nicely. So what you might do is deburr this edge, sandpaper down the pipe, get rid of anything that's there stopping out of the way. And then also I had to put this in the linisher and just uh, sand off, you know, half a mil or so around the whole, um, around this whole edge here to get it to actually go in nicely so that will go in nicely now um, but we still need to chip out um, the uh, little bit of concrete okay um, so this is like a bit of an intro and there'll be plenty of vids to come um, we've also roughed in the plumbing for the shower um, so this is one of those um, I don't remember the name of it, it's been a while. But basically, it, it, you rotate it, starts on cold, low pressure, goes to cold, high pressure, and then it starts mixing, um, you know, from cold to hotter as you go right around. So that is um, pretty cool. Looking forward to seeing how that all works in the end. Um, we didn't want to get rid of the cornices. So what we've done, that's where I started initially and then realized that I can't really do a plaster join there. So that's why I've cut with just a um, circular saw set to the correct depth so you don't hurt the studs or any wiring or anything um, and cut all the way around so that way when I put the new sheeting up against it um, we can obviously nail it onto all the stud work but I can do a, a, wet, a water um, a wet room plaster seal there like um so just the um, wet room plaster because it's different to a normal room plaster and then you can use the tape um, over the top to create a strong joint obviously this is going to be um, well not obvious to you but to me this is going to be tiled from 
floor to ceiling so any little join there will be covered anyway and it could be raised you know half a mil or so with the the tape but it's not going to matter because you'll get that in the um in the tile adhesive even if it's like very very marginally protruding you won't notice it because the tile adhesive will um uh, be you know a couple mil thick so it'll, it'll just sit within that um we are also doing um heated flooring so we're going to do under tile heated flooring not because with this we're not putting a screed back down so we're not putting an in screed heating we're doing under tile um here's our sensor so we've chased out um a bit of concrete here and this will get filled a little bit with concrete it's a little deep um I'll tape up this end because you don't want to actually bury the sensor in the concrete. If this ever breaks, you want to be able to replace it. So I'll be um, uh, taping up the end with some good tape and then it'll just sit um, sort of, you know, that sort of level, like pretty much flush with the concrete, maybe slightly above the concrete. So it's sort of in the tile um, glue area. Um, you need to test that before you, or well you need to test your heating element mat and the sensor before you go and install it. You don't want to be installing a dud device and done all that work and you know then the sensor actually doesn't work. So, um, if you've got any questions, let me know down below. There's a lot of stuff we've already done um, that I haven't shown you guys. Like here, for example, this is going to be the toilet the older style buildings used to have the water outlet around here somewhere nice and tight in behind the pan to be sort of hidden but the modern day pans are all going to be wall like flush mount so you need to move them out a little bit so i've already we've already cut that out uh, moved it out and i've already plastered that up with the wet room plaster um next up the next video that i do will be on installing these puddle flanges getting them to the right um, seated area, using some concrete screws, uh, ram set I think they were, um, putting them in, putting in aluminium water stops in the shower and in the doorway. Then I'll look to do a slab repair. So there's an Ardex product, I think it's A45. Um, it's a slab repair. What that's going to do is it's going to give us a fall from our puddle flange so the puddle flange will be installed and then from the edge of the puddle flange to the outside we are going to put a slab repair this will be over the top of the water stop and then we'll get a nice little fall you know eight eight to ten mil fall or so we'll, I'll, I'll figure out the exact number later um, uh, for this size space because each size space is different you need to go on you know full not a certain uh, number like 10 mil over 10 meters is nowhere near enough but 10 mil over half a meter will be um, pretty good um, and uh, we'll do that slab repair to set our fall then we will waterproof then we'll do a screed on top of that to get this level uh, and then we will actually waterproof on top of it and a lot of people talk about puddle flanges and there's a lot of information out there and I know Gripset talk about doing the double puddle flange method where you put one in here and then you'll put one into the screed as well. Problem with that is you may, if it's a thin screed, you may, um, you may actually penetrate your new waterproofing below that when you're fixing the second puddle flange down because if you're drilling 20, 30 mil, down and your new screed isn't that deep um you know you're actually going to compromise your new waterproofing so um i haven't made a final decision on that i will get to it um but i'm thinking single puddle flange um it will be double waterproofed and i'll show you what that looks like you gotta be careful not to seal in the edge on the top layer otherwise you'll actually be creating um, like a locked system and it won't be able to drain if there if it ever does get past the top layer of waterproofing so I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, I am not a waterproofer by the way but 
I've done uh, a little bit of research and I've read the standards um, and we are doing, just doing our best with it. I'm taking our time trying to get it right. And, uh, you know, if, if you've got any tips for me, let me know below. Um, a mirror there with the LEDs in it. So there's a cable. Um, we're going to waterproof the whole area and up the walls, probably, you know, two or 300 mil. Uh, yeah, look, that's sort of it guys. I'll hopefully have a little bit more structured videos for you um, and progress videos. This one is just a, I wanted to get it stripped down and a lot of the rough ends done. And then I'll show you the build process because I think most people could strip down. Um, maybe they might not go to this extent. A lot of people tile over tiles and things like that. I'm not really too keen on that um, idea. I'd rather just strip it back and start from scratch a bit more work but i think it'll be a better result in the end and that way also we can get rid of that step in lip if you want to get rid of that if you want a seamless um, transition from carpet to tile and then in from tile um, from tile to shower or bathroom floor to shower floor you can get that as well um so yeah give us a like please and uh hopefully you like the vids and let us know what you think have a good one